from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School. And with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to the celebration of this daily televised Mass. My name is Father Michael Coots. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from an anonymous donor from Dieppe, New Brunswick. This Mass is being offered for all people to know and love God throughout the world. One of the remarkable features of the televised Mass is the support it receives from coast to coast. We are truly a national community and we are also telecasted across the world via YouTube. And so on behalf of all of us, we thank our donor from Dieppe. Today we celebrate the feast of St. John of the Cross, and on this day we ask this great saint to help us to come closer to God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who gave the priest St. John an outstanding dedication to perfect denial and love of the cross, grant that by imitating him closely at all times, we may come to contemplate eternally your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God, who teaches you for your own good, who leads you in the way you should go. Oh, that you had paid attention to my commandments. Then your prosperity would have been like a river and your success like the waves of the sea. Your offspring would have been like the sand and your descendants like it grains. Their name would never be cut off or destroyed from before me. The word of the Lord. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Those who follow you, Lord, will have the light of life. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. And those who follow you, by streams of water which yield their fruit in its season and their leaves do not wither in all that they do they prosper and those who follow are not 
not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Those who follow The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus had finished instructing his disciples, Jesus continued to speak to the crowds about John the Baptist. To what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated in her deeds. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear people of God, the first reading from Isaiah 48 is a lyrical poem and as a lyric, lyrical poem, we should just enjoy it. Speaks about your prosperity will be like a river, your success like the waves of the sea. Your offspring will be like the sands and your descendants like the grains on the sand. And as a lyrical poem, we should just sit down, soak into it, and realize what a message of peace, of consolation. Just like we heard in the Alleluia verse, the Lord is coming out. Go out to meet him, the Lord who brings us peace. Now, this was spoken to the people of Israel when they were in captivity. And so it was a message of joy and peace and happiness and anticipation. And so we should enjoy this lyrical poem in the same sense. We should allow it to flow over us like the water flows on a riverbed over the stones in the riverbed, or like the spirit, the wind blows through the forests of the trees of your mind. But unfortunately, like students, we like to take every word we like to analyze it, we like to dissect it, and so we lose that beautiful message of Isaiah. And how were people going to do this? We had that in our response. If we follow the path of the Lord, we will see the light. And the first psalm that we had as our responsorial psalm gives us three distinct ways of following the path of the Lord. I will not follow the counsel of the wicked. I will not sit in the company of scorners. I shall not keep the path of sinners. If only we could do that. But neither the people of Israel nor we today 
manage to keep that in mind or to live by those principles. The people of Israel in captivity had been living for more than two generations, three generations with the Gentiles and gradually they began to adopt the, the, the religion, the traditions and the idols. They began to get drunk and dissipated. They began to follow the, follow the idea that they were people of the covenant. <coughs> and as a result, they went into trouble again and again and again. But Isaiah's message to them was, be not afraid to come back because the Lord is not going to punish you and you don't need to make sacrifices in order to come back to the Lord who is faithful even when we are unfaithful. We may lose faith in God, but God does not lose faith in us. And we have that same message of being faithful to the Lord and keeping his covenant in the gospel today, but from a totally different angle. Jesus speaks about John the Baptist. He says, when he was over here, the scribes and the Pharisees condemned him. And why did they condemn him? Because he lived a life of asceticism. He did not eat, he did not drink, he was austere, and they simply said he's possessed by the devil or he's the demon himself. Now the Son of Man comes, he eats, he drinks, and they condemn him as a drunken and as a glutton. So the scribes and the Pharisees had two different standards, and Jesus keeps on telling us we need to have the same standard for everybody. And the standard is one of compassion, a son of, one of anticipation of the Lord as he comes, or one of hope and one of peace that we enjoy here today. Unfortunately, we don't seem to be doing that very well. As we go along, we tend to become more or less like the people of the scribes and Pharisees 2,000 years ago. We put on a proud posture. We look down on other people. We like to dress well. I'm not saying that we have to dress shabbily. We like to dress well and show off rather than be people that are living lives of simplicity and kindness. We put on an arrogant attitude towards people who are not as well as educated, people who are homeless, people who are in need, people who do not seem to be able to follow instructions. And we put on misguided masks, trying to think that we are special and great and wonderful, and we only deceive ourselves, and we don't deceive those around us who can quite see us quite easily. And there are two things that we have during this Advent season which show precisely the way we act like scribes and Pharisees rather than like Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who was kind and compassionate. Recently, I went into the store, and as I was standing in line to pay the bill, one of the Christians obviously in front of me said, Happy Christmas, and the lady over there said, Happy Holidays. And she says, How dare you say Happy Holidays? You know we are in a Christian country, and Christ is the reason for the season. And she felt very proud of herself, and she walked out with her head held high. And to myself, I said, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I know exactly what the scribes and the Pharisees must have been like to Jesus 2,000 years ago. They did the same thing. They wanted to be upright in such a way to push other people down. Why do you come on a Sabbath day to be healed? There are five days in a week, six days in a week. Come on these other days. Why do you eat food that is not allowed to be eaten and you do things when you pass through the fields and take the way, grain in your hands and you eat it when it's not allowed on the Sabbath? And I thought to myself, as she went out, this lady went out, I put myself in the shoes of the cashier. If she was not a Catholic, she would say, God help me, I don't want to join these Christians at all if we're going to have these type of people over there. 
But if she wasn't, a, she was a Catholic and who had dropped out of practicing their faith, she'd have said, my mother wants me to come back to the faith, to the church with these type of people. We put people down and unfortunately, we don't get ahead of anything. This woman achieved nothing apart from discombobulating all of us who were in the line over there. We often make happy holidays and happy Christmas a problem, a distraction. Jesus Christ wouldn't have been interested in it at all. He didn't come for titles. He didn't come for honors. He came to spread the reign of God. And then. You know, happy Christmas, put Christ back into the season. The best way to do it is not by shouting slogans or putting up placards, but showing us in our very lives. People have to look at us and say, yeah, Christ is in Christmas because I can see it in this man, I can see it in this woman, I can see it in this child. And how can we do it? By compassion towards people who are in need, by generosity, by walking the same path of Jesus Christ, who came to serve, not to be served. And this is the best way of putting Christ back into Christmas. God bless you all. Join me now as we pray together. <clears throat> For all those in our daily televised mass community that have asked to be included in our prayer intention book, we pray to the Lord that the God of endurance and encouragement may lift and console all of us who are weighed down with illness, loneliness, or grief, especially those who have written in and asked for prayers. We pray to the Lord. For the church working to overcome divisions between persons, races, and nations, we pray to the Lord. For those who desire freedom from oppression in their lives, especially people in Yemen, people in the Middle East who are suffering the bombings, we pray to the Lord. Lord Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the gifts you have given us and continue to give us day by day through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite heart. Pray, sisters, brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer Almighty God in commemoration of St. John of the Cross and grant that we who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion may imitate what we now enact. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. For as on the feast, as the festival of St. John of the Cross, you bid her, your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life and teach her by the, his words of preaching and keep us safe in answer to his prayers. And so now with the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we sing. Blessed is he who comes in the 
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith, faith of this your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship. sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sins of the
the world grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Would those of you at home join me now in this prayer about God's love? Oh God, your love for me is a mystery. I can count hundreds of reasons why I am unworthy of your providence and care. When I identify my talents and abilities, I must recognize that even these come from you. I can neither understand your esteem for me nor pretend to adequately respond to your graciousness. Guide me then in our relationship. Remove from me everything which keeps me apart from you. Give me all I need to grow and flourish in your love. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who is in Saint John of the Cross, have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from the sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass has been celebrated. Go now in the peace of Christ to love and serve the Lord and one another. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for prayers are included in our Prayer Intentions book and shared with all of our celebrants. Claire.